Okay guys, the engine is running again and it's running good. So um, we uh, let the motor idle for about half an hour to see whether there was still coming water coming out and out the exhaust. And that did, so uh, we decided to, uh, to go. Uh, there's no leakage uh, wherever uh, on the engine and uh, I think uh, the fix went, uh, went well. So, uh, but just in any case, um, I got two sets of uh, drive belts. So if this one fails, I still have another one to put on, but I don't expect it to fail because uh, the other one was really old, I think, but yeah. <laughs> So this is um, Saint Valery Ancon, if I say it correct. Don't know if you can see it. It's a little village there. So plan A was to go there. It's a three-hour sail, something like that, from Dieppe. But the conditions are so good, so we're gonna go along. Uh, up the coast coast and go to Falcon Hey guys, we are here at uh, Fécamp in uh, France at uh, the Benedicte um, uh, distillery. Right. And um, it's almost two o'clock, now we can enter. So uh, we'll let you, let you see uh, the inside. In 1510, at Vecamp Abbey, the Benedictine monk Dom Bernardo Vincelli created a secret elixir, which was so successful, they continued producing it until the French Revolution, where the recipe got lost. At one day in 1863, Alexander Legrand, a wine trader from Vecamp, found the composition of the elixir by chance in his library. The elixir became a liquor called Benedictine after the monk and he built the palace Benedictine to provide a prestigious setting for the distillery, which is still in operation today. I think the story of her is very boring, so we just drink the glasses and then we leave. Okay, maybe it isn't boring, but... We don't understand a word of it, because it's in French. And we know a lot of rain is coming. Thus, we want to be back on the boat before that hit us.
after a wet arrival, we were too late to get inside upon Fleur. So the next day, in the early morning, we go through the bridge inside of the marina of Montfleur. Yes. Oh. <laughs> hey, thank you. So, what do you do when you have overripe bananas? Um, I got this recipe from Karen from Delos. I just saw it in one of their uh, YouTube videos. Um, basically what you do is you take the banana, you squish it, you add an egg and then you put it in a frying pan and then you have a, a banana pancake. So I'm trying this out. Never done this before. On the side we put some bacon. Alrighty. Looks like baby food now. Two eggs on one banana. This looks like a better. I forgot the baking powder at the first one. We watched back the recipe from Karen. So, fail. After a couple of days spent in beautiful Honfleur, it's time to move on. It's great to have your home almost in the terraces, but those people are watching yeah. us all the time. We drive here on onto the outside yeah, dock, perfect. so we can go out to the open the next morning. Thank you guys for watching and see you next time. Cheers!